Can you see this sausage? Can I see it? Yeah. Uh -huh. Ready? What are you doing? Just, just film. Don't be afraid, it's not dangerous, it's not a python snake, it is smoked sausage. Homemade oh goodness and a green chili in every bite. Smoked bratwurst Mexican sausage. <music> Who doesn't like a sausage? I'm not talking just a breakfast sausage patty, I'm talking a link sausage. But one of my most favorite sausages in the world is a bratwurst. Usually it's made out of maybe pork and veal, sometimes pork and beef, sometimes just veal and beef. You want to make the best kind, that's why we're going to cowboy this bratwurst up. We're going to make it a Mexican bratwurst, but you're going to need some things. I'd say one of the most important things you're going to need is not the bathroom scales, no. Just your set of scales that you can weigh stuff out on because you've got to have proportional rates here from pork to beef and fat. You're going to need a grinder. You know. You ever walk down the street, Shannon, you see that guy and he's got the little organ and he's playing and there's a little monkey running around down there. See my little monkey right here? It's called a major monkey. They put them in casings and there's all kinds of casings. These are a natural hog casing. They're sheep casings too, but I've used these a lot. They hold up well and we'll get into that a little more in a minute. What do we got here? We have a sausage stuffer. I mean, these things is so good. It's got all the attachments that come with you. We have to keep all this stuff cold while we're making sausage. The meat, we're gonna chop after a while, we're gonna freeze. But this sausage grinder, if Shan will get in here, you can see the frost on it. I have had it in the freezer. Make sure that everything is really chilled, good and cold, and you'll have a better sausage when you get through. <laughs> pork butt. Look at all this good marbling of fat it's got on here. One pound of bacon. Some beef with some good marbling and fat. Don't y'all get on to me too mad now. I'm using a ribeye in mine because it's so, going to be really like, good. Wait, but what kind of beef? What kind of beef would like, you prefer? Do I, does it have to be a ribeye? Oh no, you can get a top sirloin cap, just something that's fatty. You can use a chuck roast if it's got enough fat in it. And then I've just got off leftover brisket fat that I've needed a little more beef fat for. So we got everybody here that we're gonna need. So we just gotta chop this up to where you can get it in the grinder, okay? So but when you slice that pork, look at all that good fat that we're gonna end up with in that sausage. Some of you may wanna make this and you don't want to have to buy a grinder. Do you have a good relationship with your man at the butcher shop? Just tell him, say, Cowboy Kent Rollins told me to come down here and ask you would you grind me some pork fat, some bacon, and some beef with some beef fat, and then grind it again, because I need to make some sausage. But I like to put it in a pot of beans, I like to put it in stew meat, you can have it for breakfast, and when you grind this, and you get it the way you want it, you can save some of this ground meat and just use it as breakfast sausage patties. So, hey, don't think it's just for smoked sausage, it is a good thing it is. Bacon, now if you've got a pork belly, already on hand, you can use that. If not, you can buy sliced bacon and just get her cubed up again. We really need this bacon fat to go along with that. And who don't love bacon? And I, I noticed you have thick cut there. Is that yes, a preference? It, I always buy thick cut if I can find it, but any kind of bacon will work except what? Turkey bacon. Don't, uh, don't be putting that in there. And this beef fat, it's been chopped up already, so I'm gonna go ahead and throw him in there from that brisket. But like I say, traditionally, this would have probably had some veal in it. Veal is a really tender meat, so I figured ribeye would be a close second. But you gotta give it a really good chill to where it'll grind a whole lot better because the warmer your meat gets when you're grinding it, the sloppier it's gonna become and you need all that collagen and all that fat to sort of stay in place and not try to melt away. So now if you're in a hurry to do this, get you a big long flat pan, scatter that meat out there to where it's just one level thick, slip it in the freezer, you could probably get by with about 20 to 30 minutes. Well, we got all that meat there in the freezer. It's time for another little deal. Get you some water, not warm water, just cold water. You gotta soak these casings. I sort of like to separate them right when I first pour them in there. You gotta hydrate them a little to where they'll stretch really well. And we'll finish up rinsing them in the house. I love to rinse the inside of them as well. So we'll let them soak about 45 minutes. By that time, the meat ought to be chilled enough we can pyre up the organ grinding electric grinder without electricity. <laughs> This is when you'd be telling yourself, man, I'd love to have an electric grinder, I would. Now, I just keep me some pressure on there. 
This thing just come out of the freezer. Remember, meat and all, it's chilled really well. It'll take it a while to get started. This is when you ask for volunteers out of the crowd to come and turn the crank, you know what I mean? We're gonna get all this ground up, then we're gonna chill it about 10 minutes ground, and then we're gonna re-grind it. That's where you get a better texture in your sausage. So, y'all rest, I'll grind. And my fingers is froze. I mean, you can't feel this one, this one, or this one. I think they're still on there, but I can't feel them. Don't grind them. Well, they're cold enough they'd fit in there, and you wouldn't know it there for a minute. <music> Through the grinder twice. If you've got bad shoulders, get you an electric one, because whoo, and I let that meat chill just a little too long there because, I mean, my gosh, it's hard to grind like that. If you got an electric grinder, you live in what they call tall cotton you are. You're in good shape. But now the most important part is we got to get all these spices mixed in there really well. We're going to use about two tablespoons of kosher salt plus a little because it's coming out of the box in a different form and fashion than I thought it would. We'll go with some coarse ground black pepper. Cletus, I think I like that. You think you'd like some of that, Cletus? Minced garlic. And then we'll go with some smoked paprika. Does this meet your approval, Cletus? I hope it does, I really do. Whole mustard seed, ground mustard powder. This is from a favorite girl, Marjorie. Her name is Marjoram. When you smell this to me, it's pretty like gardeny, fresh when you smell it. But folks, it don't take much of this, it's pretty stout. Ooh, look here what we got from, I done ground me up some dried ancho chilies. You're gonna need you about two to three tablespoons of this. Now, when you're making sausage, and I don't know if you've heard of this word, it's called emulsifier. I like to use powdered milk. Now, I'm gonna do this in two hitches I am. It's gonna take about eight or nine tablespoons across here, but we're gonna mix four in there right now. And then we're gonna go to mixing this by hand, and then, we will add some more. But the reason you have to have this is when, when you get sausage cooked and you're looking at it and you, you wanna hear that snap when you break it in half, but also when you cut it, you don't want it to be mealy. You want it to slice. That way, that emulsification is holding all this together, bonding it tight, and that's what we gotta have. So just like kneading biscuits, it's time to go to work and go to kneading sausage. Hands got cold, Shen. I see that. I had to go get some reinforcements. And it may not ever get these gloves on on top of these other gloves, but we might. <clears throat> some more milk powder. One of my favorite ingredients ever in the whole wide world that I try to mix in everything, and if I could squeeze it in a dessert, I'd do that too. That or hatch green chili, it is. My gosh, don't get nothing better than that. So we are gonna put some hatch green chilies in here, but not just any just regular old hatch green chilies. No, these are made by the Fresh Chili Company. Y'all have seen me use these products before. And not only have they just got hatch green chilies that are roasted and stuff like that for a salsa, enchilada sauce, all kind of red sauce. I mean, they got it all, but hey, it makes great Christmas presents as well. It can be a stocking stuffer. They got it all on there, so be sure and check them folks out. <music> Smells good. I mean, the aroma coming off that is fit to eat. It is. Now, remember, at this time, it is very important. We're just going to pinch us a little bit off here, and we're going to roll it up in a ball, and you need to fry one piece, and that way you can have a snack. But really, what you're trying to find out is, do I need to change the seasoning in here of any kind? Do I need to add something that I'm missing? Too late once you get it in the casing, ain't gonna happen. So make sure you fry a piece, taste it, and see what you need. Mm. Be the end of the video. We don't make sausage no more. We're gonna fry the whole thing. I want you to try this, Shen. It is so good and delicious, juicy. Mmm. Them green chilies. Well, that's good. They make a big difference, they do. But really the ratio you have from pork fat to beef fat to everything keeps it really good and juicy. Yeah. Y'all will get something later. 
and we're going to use our rough neck smoker and run a temperature of about 250 degrees burning straight cherry wood today but we're going to smoke that sausage to where it's sort of a slow smoke to get it come up just right so we have got all that made we got our sausage stuffing put together here but when you get this i need you to take that sausage stuffer and i need you to chunk it down in there mash it in the bottom we're trying to keep the air out of it we don't want a lot of air in that casing so just throw her down in there like you was just maybe going to spike the football you know after you made touchdown you can see where we're at, right about to the top. If you've got yourself a sausage press before you start, just put your finger over the end here to get it ready to go, because when this gets down there so far, we don't want none of that sausage to come out of there. So just keep her there, and you can see we're coming right here. So let off that crank, because we're forcing the air out here. Just keep it coming slowly, and we'll let it go right to the end of that. This is sort of a painstaking process at times it is get you some of this casing and you just got to thread it on there i like to wet this a little just finding the end to start now when you're taking this always try to keep this casing just a little taut but not much and you can see how it's slipping on there but see where it's over here on the edge i like to try to keep it more towards the center or the middle it'll thread on there a little easier it will i just like to take this run her back over here in a knot and tie it. Try to push it straight up here as close as you can to the sausage stuffer itself. Pull it tight. You need to sort of help feed it. Oh my gosh. Feed it along and depends on how big you want them. But just let it keep filling to keep pressure. You want to try to keep the air out of it. That is the big thing. And not having a table that wobbles helps a lot. And if you blow a casing out or you split one, don't think it is the worst thing that can happen because you can tie that back off and start again. But as you see yourself getting closer to the end of the casing, let off the crank handle here because we don't want to run a bunch out there. And then just go to twisting that casing off there. Knot this up, but you can see how that's tight. And you have what? A full roll of sausage. If there's any air, and we did a really good job. I don't see a lot of air in here, but if you was to find a little air pocket, take you a toothpick and just pierce it, push the air out, and just seal it back over. So we want to get that out of there. We're going to roll up one more, and hey, we're going to smoke us some sausage. about 35 minutes to get to that end result and folks the grinding the chilling all of it is worth the effort that sausage has got so much juice in it i'm gonna go ahead and hand me a bite mm. this might be the best batch of sausage i've ever made shin well, and why i think increasing the ancho chili and the green chili oh. but straight cherry wood is all it got to from the smoky woods company i thank them folks It'll give it such a good red color to it, but it gives it so much flavor. It's pretty mellow smoke, but mm, so good. I'm gonna have one more bite. Mm. And you see how that sausage is sort of curled up there? Got that rolling round motion. And sometimes you gotta roll it the other way and you be feeling good and smooth like. <sighs> now folks, when we did check that with our chef's temp, 165 is about what you're after. You can go to 170, but hey, that is the doneness that is really needed to be. And that's, uh, don't get no better than that, it don't. Remember now, when you get all that sausage made up and all your seasoning, don't forget to fry you one little patty to see what you think if you need to add something to it. Because once it's in here, no more.
We thank y'all so much for joining us today. It was a great deal. And it is with pride, honor, and privilege that I tip my hat to all our servicemen and women and all the veterans who have kept that old flag of flying back there. We commend you all. The rest of you, get on up in here really quick because me and the pups are hungry. God bless you, each and every one, and I'll see you down the smoked bratwurst Mexican sausage trail. Can you scratch my nose? How's a Oh, sorry. Thank you. Culinary. Beep. He can't.